now you've got it! This is the Clash Royale League! In the European region, today's first match features two unbeaten teams. Two terrific tandems will collide. Surgical Goblin and Diego B aim to keep Team Liquid on a roll, while G2 Esports brothers Shia and Fane are ready to rock. Gentlemen, let's do this! Hello and welcome to Clash Royale League. I'm Rich Slayton. Joining me is Paul and Verum Todkill to bring you the second week of competition in the European region. We've already seen some amazing games in Europe and today we finally get to see the last of our amazing octet of talent here as Dignitas is joining us in the CRL. All of those teams looking to get the best possible records, the top four, at the end of the season go to our playoffs. The winner of that represents Europe at the World Finals. And of course, you can catch all the action right here on the Clash Royale League Esports YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, catch all the action, or head over to esports.clashroyale.com or the new esports tab in-game. Today we have two teams looking to extend their perfect records, G2 Esports versus Team Liquid. Ooh, two powerhouse rosters here. Both of these teams are favorites in the region, but we have to talk about Team Liquid with names like Surgical Goblin, Diego B, and Azilis. And across from them in G2's corner, of course, the brothers Sheer and Faye. Very impressive in 2v2, but don't count, don't, don't forget for a second about Canario. Canario and Fairchu as well. A, a bunch of amazingly talented, strong players there, and they're consistently good. I think that consistency they're going to need to bring every ounce of that into this matchup. To get some more insight in today's matchup, we have Christy St. John standing by with G2's manager, Martine. Thanks, guys. Martine, G2 and Team Liquid, or Team Liquid are both coming off of sweeping victories. How do you feel going into the match? Well, I think this is one of the most important matches for this season. We are both favorites for, for the title, and uh, whoever comes here winning, he's going to have like a boost of morale that can bring him to the forward thing. Say. Absolutely. Are you feeling com feeling confident? Yeah, actually, we actually feel very, very confident. Even too much, maybe. Uh, I hope everything goes great, and uh, I hope we don't even need to go to King of the Hill. But we play against uh, f uh, three people from the top five in the world, so it's not going to be easy. Exactly. I mean, when you got at this level, it's never going to be easy, and you have to be on your game. Are you? Yeah. I mean, we are. We we showed it against SK, and I think that people are going to like what G2 has to bring for this match as well. Absolutely. I'm excited to see it. Back to you guys. Thanks, Christy. We'll bring you these games in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's take a moment and review our format. As always, we start off with the 2v2. Following that, we go into our 1v1. And if we needed our tiebreaker format, the King of the Hill. Of course, each of these individual set will have their own you know, specific bands, and those bands will only be relevant to that particular match. Of course, we won't know King of the Hill lineups unless it becomes necessary, but right now the team's preparing for their 2v2 and 1v1. Let's listen in inside the war room. Nos toca Team Liquid. Llevamos dura semana de entrenamiento en el gimnasio, bueno, y un poco de clase real también. Para el 2 contra 2, hemos cambiado totalmente. Canario, Sir, os toca a vosotros. Eh, han baneado, hemos baneado a Sabueso, nos han baneado Tornado. ¿Qué vais a plantear? contra ese pan tornado que nos han sorprendido un poco. Bueno, pues vamos a plantear meta terrestre porque por, para eso hemos ganado los abuesos y vamos a ir con peca, con infernales y combinación de minero y hechizos. Perfecto, maravilloso. Y bueno, uno contra uno, te toca a ti, Fey. Van a estar asustadísimos, van en bola, todo el mundo te conoce como jugador de trío, así que se van a esperar trío, pero ¿con qué les vamos a sorprender? Les podemos sorprender con mazos que vayan bien contra Pintón porque me ha baneado Dragon Infernal, por lo que puede ir bastante bien. Claro, entonces... ¿Con, con, qué, ¿Con qué pensas empezar? Con Monta Valkyria. Monta Valkyria. Yo creo que es perfecto, además todos sabemos lo bueno que hacéis con eso, así que confianza 100% en ¿eh? él. Chavales, adelante. ¿Confiado todo? ¿Tranquilo? Perfecto, sí. Ok, since they been Black Hound, right? And you've been Tornado, I think Golem Balloon is a good strategy. And for my one first one, he been the Fireball, and I been the Inferno Dragon. So I think first game I will surprise him using Black Hound Poison, like Black Balloon. Yeah. Because, well, I don't think you will expect it with the uh, fireball band because normally, like, no one plays Lava Loom with uh, poison. Yeah, okay. you won't expect that. I think sure, it's yeah. good. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. The teams are all talked out. I mean, there's really nothing left to say at this point. It's time to let their nimble fingers do the talking. 2v2 combatants, let's go! We're about to begin the first set of this matchup between G2 and Team Liquid. 
both teams opting to switch up their lineups. G2, the breaking of the brothers. Canario now playing with Sheer. Vegas going to be in that 1v1. Interesting here, mixing things up. Both of these teams finding success in their respective 2v2s. And interestingly enough, both are opting to make changes. Diego B and Azili's will be in the 2v2 matchup for Team Liquid, leaving Surgical Goblin possibly to be as our 1v1 guy looks like. Ooh, that does indeed. We're going to have Tornado banned out pretty standard here in 2v2, and Lava Hound banned. Lava Hound, a card we've been seeing a lot in 2v2, becoming a staple as part of the meta. Denying it here is G2. I'm really excited to see what they do with this ban. Very interesting Tornado, of course. Very useful. Lots of options. But one thing it does, uh, it would do is stop or stop a balloon, so a band that you might think Lava Loon coming out, but with Lava Hound gone, maybe we'll see more action on the ground. Uh, definitely a possibility here, a ban on a ban card, because of course both of these teams are submitting these bans, not knowing what the opponent is going to do, so we have to see two of the same ban. We'll see what happens here as we get into our first game. And here we go, 2v2 is underway, the first of potential three sets between G2 and Team Liquid. Azili's and Diego B taking on Canario and Sheer. Seeing a miner cycling out to start things off. No surprise there. Giant Snowball again. Oh! A beautiful activation using the Giant Snowball. Now Team Liquid has their double King Tower in play. We were theorizing about this in North America yesterday. Seeing it brought to life here, the Snowball with that activation. Beautiful play to start this off. A lot of small troops so far. Again, the Tornado not active to help clean those bad boys up. We are seeing the Cannon Cart, though, being uh, levied out here right now. Cannon Cart and Valkyrie, two cards being so prevalent in the meta right now. And the Golem behind it looking fairly standard beatdown for Team Liquid. No Tornado does give that Golem a nice little buff here in 2v2, but a P.E.K.K.A. Inferno Dragon combination to stop it in its tracks. You want to talk about a response? This is the response. We are seeing the Balloon coming in here as well. There is going to be a lock with that Inferno Dragon. Going to try and get this towards the tower. Not quite able to find the balloon impact. Beautiful hold there from G2. You gotta wonder if that snowball was meant to push Inferno Dragon off of the balloon or if it did the job it was going for. But still, as we reach the halfway point of regulation time, a slight lead for G2 Esports. Both teams have slung a lot of elixir, but only a little bit of chip damage going through to start this off. Both of these teams now have basically seen what their opponent's decks are meant to do. We did see a beautiful rocket coming in now for G2. The rocket occurred we're going to have to watch for all game long because, of course, spell nuke, spell cycle in 2v2 is so critical. And another golem push from the back. Though you have to think with both the P.E.K.K.A. and Inferno Dragon, that golem might get chewed up every single time. That is absolutely the answer. When you have P.E.K.K.A., every one of those swings is going to do so much damage. And of course, the Inferno Dragon is a boot. Poison going to be doing its work here in this 2v2 format. Like we always talk about, one of the best cards here because of the sheer amount and radius of damage that Bites. We are now in double elixir time. The balloon just almost sneaking through for Team Liquid. G2 really wants to push the opposite lane here when we get those big golem pushes coming down the right hand side. Those big golem pushes are huge, but we keep seeing it cycling through these cards, getting the chip damage, hitting every single time. We're seeing that miner going in a different position. We're seeing the rockets. We're going to see the fireballs coming through now for G2, but we do have a slight lead for Team Liquid. And again, we cannot gather up those troops to rocket them together, use the tornado as it is banned. But still, G2 doing a good job defending so far. The poison, though, now, really nice placement on the P.E.K.K.A. and the Inferno Dragon and the tower. That Team Liquid Poison, absolutely huge, getting all the key targets here as well. This balloon getting oh so low, it will not connect, but still a lot of damage finding its way home to the tower of G2 Esports. Now in sudden death overtime, the tower on the right hand side of G2 uh -oh. really in death range. Oh, but we do get a cannon, cannon card lock on the right hand side. That's absolutely huge. No! They're not going to get through at all. That was oh so close. The cannon card sneaking through underneath all the attack, but that is still going to be it. The log sneaks through and seals game number one for G2. Sneaky cannon carts. We've been talking about it for a while. Just get in there 500, 600 damage. Can fall through the middle. Just absolutely beautiful. Missing Watch that cannon cart. That was GG's right there. As soon as it got a lock, there was no coming back. All it took was the log. And that is it. Game number one in the books. G2 out to an early lead. Almost double the elixir in terms of spells used by G2 
esports. So really focusing on cycling those through and getting that damage done. Really nice play from them. Well, a great job sitting on defense. They knew they had the counter to that golem with both the P.E.K.K.A. and the Inferno Dragon in their deck getting just enough on that right-hand tower and sneaking by. For a second, it looked like they were going down. Oh, it did, it did too. I mean, all it was going to take was a couple more poisons to get them out there, but finding their win condition there through all of that, finding the cannon cart, locking on to the tower, and that was what it took to secure themselves the win here. That's only our first game, though. G2 looking to take it in two games now, and, of course, Team Liquid looking to take us to game number three. Was splitting the brothers the right move for G2? Faye now sitting on the sidelines watching Sheer play with Canario. Will it pay off, or will Team Liquid take this next game? Well, we're going to see here as both are starting off fairly standard. We are seeing miners coming up from both sides to the stones as well, and the rocket is there immediately to lock down that cannon cart. Cannon cart stuck way in the back, and now an aggressive kind of big balloon up front from G2. Interesting decision there from them. The lightning, though, can help clear the way. The, I actually think it's going to connect. Oh, no, the beautiful bat placement just to get that out of there. The death damage is still going to be there. But I love it. Seeing the rocket coming down and then utilizing on the counter push was G2 knowing that, that Team Liquid did not have that strength answer. Yeah, the miner did do some work, getting taking some of that damage away and keeping stuff off the balloon. You know, I doubt you're going to see a lot more troops behind the tower coming from Team Liquid now that the rocket is out there. But here we see the Royal Giant way and back, and there comes the P.E.K.K.A. and Inferno Dragon, who will make quick work. Oh, but wait! Here's the Giant Skeleton stopping things right at the bridge. Oh, wait, there's more Giant Skeletons there, immediately getting ripped to shreds. The bomb, though, is going to do its work in return, but a beautiful hold the push now coming in from G2 Esports. No, so solid, and there is the rocket return. The answer is there. Shut it down, it's Team Liquid. And now the Miner in the back getting some more chip damage on the right-hand side. We are just 16 seconds away from double elixir time. And G2 looking very close to putting a sweep on the 2v2 set. They're making these giant, amazing pushes, getting this all put together beautifully. And Team Liquid is often having the responses, but still, all the while, the Miner in the back is there. The bomb dropping from that giant skeleton. Not super consequential to the peck of the health that you have on that thing. It's just so big. And still, we're seeing every single time the miners get. Miner poison doing some 2v2 work here. And now we have the Royal Giant, a big push trying to get across the river. Can it get over the bridge and do some damage? No distraction yet. Held up a bit by the e Wiz, but gets a few shots off on that right-hand tower. This push of Team Liquid looking oh so strong, bringing them back into this game right now. The Royal Giant finding its range right now, but look at the push coming in. The Miner in the back as well. The Log is there, but one more hit. That is going to be with only 19 seconds left in the clock. A lot is at the Team Liquid right now to make this work. Team Liquid, can they get on that right-hand tower with the Tombstone down the left-hand side? Looks like probably not. And there we get the GGs from Team Liquid, knowing 2v2 is going to their opponents. And there we go, G turns twos, Canario and Sheer sweeping the first set of this matchup. Making some changes for both teams, and it seems to have been the correct decision for G2 Esports. Team Liquid just not quite able to find it there. Really just came down to a lot of beautiful holds and then the chip damage and counter push from G2. That miner was so devastating, not having the appropriate cards to reset. All they had was an Ice Spirit, no Zap, no E-Wiz, and that miner just got in over and over again. Slowly just wearing down your opponents, guys. It's it's you know it's a marathon, not a sprint here. Where G2 really showing us that in this matchup, staying calm, knowing exactly what they needed to do. Every single time the Team Liquid tried to mount a push, we saw the answer. The P.E.K.K.A. was there. The Inferno Dragon was there. That was exactly what they needed to do to take that in convincing fashion two to zero. G2 out to an early lead in this match, but 1v1 is on its way. And look, you're up against Azili's and Diego B. You're like, we got through that great, but look who you have to face up next. It's Surgical Goblin. The 1v1 set is at hand. One player repping each team all alone under the lights you can almost hear the crickets no pressure guys just do your thing let's battle in the arena 1v1 on its way Faye 
making his debut in the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Faye no longer playing with his brother in the 2v2, going up against Surgical Goblin of Team Liquid. If you've watched Clash on YouTube, you've probably seen this guy's face. He's going to show up here and prove why he is one of the best players in the game. Faye has been ranked number one on the global ladder, as has Surgical Goblin. Both of them, let's look at their band cards. We see the Inferno Dragon and Fireball coming out. Inferno Dragon, of course, a great counter to most standard beatdown decks. Fireball, one of those tried and true classic response to them is Royal Hogs. 1v1 about to happen now. Interesting note here, you see Surgical Goblin being put in the 1v1, a little switch up here. Uh, Canario, who played in 2v2 a moment ago, did beat him a few months back in a tournament. You wonder if Surge got asked for the switch to get some revenge, and then not knowing the lineup, here he is against Faye instead. Interesting, because, oh man, well, some stories from last week as well tying in, but you know what, let's just get into this game here, Rich. It's game number one of the 1v1. Remember, Fireball and Inferno Dragon off the board. Surgical Goblin of Team Liquid at the top of your screen. At the bottom is G2's Faye. So last week, Pomp, I believe, was banned up against, in the 1v1 here, they, they make the, put uh, some of these bands going into this, and Faye, traditionally known as one of those amazing three musketeer players. I wonder if in the past people were thinking like, oh, you know, was it potentially Faye going to be in that 1v1? No, he ended up playing with his brother, but here, this time around, he is in the 1v1, going up against Surge, that's a tall order. Surgical Goblin, so far just getting the poison down, the Royal Ghost gets all the way through, so frustrating in that Ghost form, just, just slides all the way in towards the tower. Getting a few key hits there, and as you can see, you know, in that 2v2 taken, it was G2 now, it is all up to Surgical Goblin of Team Liquid to stop the sweep right now, the Ram is coming through here be cleaned up relatively easily by that minion there, or those minions I should say, but now we're seeing a fairly standard I'm expecting Bandit to coming out here as well for G2, or potentially not with the Royal Ghost, just an E-Wiz bridge stamp deck with that ramp. Surge talked about that Lava Hound coming out, the, uh, the Lava decks against the ban of Inferno Dragon, very nice, but now we have the bridge spam coming from Faye, and uh, that does pretty well against Lava decks, not a lot of ground answers for Surgical Goblin right now. Not a whole lot of ground answers, but this Lava Hound is going to be marching on through, or flapping on through, I should say. True Lava Loop now coming in from Surgical Goblin and connecting, looking to connect onto this tower. How is Faye going to answer this? The Flying Machine down a little late, though. Big damage here, and the Poison will also clear the way a bit. I don't think we'll see the, the Balloon get on the King Tower, but maybe some death damage here. Death damage is going to connect. The E-Wiz is here, but just giving up that uh, tower was Faye, realizing just didn't have the answer to deal with this. It's going to be tough to deal with all of that HP in the air. Now that we are in double elixir time, though, maybe Faye can find the split push that he needs. He'll need to get both, of course, of these Princess Towers down in time, and Surge can just play defense from here on out, but I'm not sure that's exactly what he's going to do. Surge with the lead as we get closer to the end of regulation. His right-hand tower, though, in danger down to 704. They committed super hard on that right-hand tower push, and they just had nothing to respond to the Lava Loon with. And we are seeing the Flying Machine getting cleaned up here as well. You need to have that. The Zappies, everything to deal with this, because watch the push that's going to be mounted here by Surge. Of course, he needs to also respond to the massive push that Faze put together. But a nice use of the Tombstone, getting the <laughs> getting that ram to distract away from the tower, but it will not be enough. Surgical Goblin's right-hand tower goes down, and now it's Faye with the slight lead as we enter into Sudden Death Overtime. Going into Sudden Death, Faye finds the answer, knocking down that Princess Tower. And now the bridge spam continues here, the ram marching on down the lane. Beautiful position, though, on the tombstone to clean that up or close it down. Barbarian not even going to get a single hit. The Team Liquid standout doing a good job with defense so far, but again, not a lot to work with against the bridge spam. But can he sneak in a shot on the tower before there can be a defense mounted by G2's Fang? So much lightning flying around, and there it is. They, we are going to get the connection there. The death of the Lava Hound actually pushing that balloon right on in range. Fairly even so far, so far for both sides. Players trading blows back and forth right now. But the P.E.K.K.A. is marching down the lane. A huge P.E.K.K.A., although easily distractible. But there sneaks in the Royal Ghost in the pocket. 
It looks like this might be a tower going down, but a great distraction with the Valkyrie played by Surgical Goblin. That Valkyrie was absolutely massive, cleaning both up the P.E.K.K.A. and the Royal Ghost. That was exactly what he needed to do. However, this is still a fairly good position for Faye. If they can just keep up the pressure right now, that's exactly what he needs to do. The P.E.K.K.A.'s can do exactly that. It's all about composure right now. Yes, you want to steal the win, but who can keep their head on straight and not make a mistake with things so tight? Right here as we now have just two minutes left in our sudden death overtime experience is going to play a huge factor here rich you absolutely nailed it keeping calm cool and composed under pressure is going to be exactly what both of these players need to be doing. The law not really getting the maximum value there. They wanted to time that out with the death of that tombstone there, so maybe a slight misplay from Faye. A very difficult spot, though, for Surgical Goblin with that bridge spam. Has to keep himself on it, has to keep himself playing defense, and still try to find a way to mount an offensive push on the right-hand side. And those Zappies still, oh, maybe the Valkyrie will take care of the, the balloon. No, not going to get through. Still, we are neck and neck here with just one minute remaining. Beautiful hold from Faye, trying to drop all the damage in the pocket with Surge, but not able to get it right now, and slowly wearing down this left-hand tower. War of Attrition, Barbarian will land one hit here, and at this point, every hit matters with 53 seconds remaining. And it's the Royal Ghost making a run, the Valkyrie getting a distraction. Faye had an opportunity to close this thing out earlier. Will that come back to bite him here in the closing seconds of this 1v1 game? Needing two more poisons to cycle through this right now. Surge needs to try and make something happen himself while also playing defense. This is going to be a very tight race. Faye's in a great position there, the flying machine. The flying machine in the pocket does its job. Faye taking the first game off of Surgical Goblin and now putting G2 just one win away from closing out Team Liquid. What an absolutely fantastic game right there. I mean, really, it just came down to the, the holds from Faye were big. I mean, sure, he lost that one tower on the overcommittal, but from there on then, he realized exactly what he was dealing with and was just able to keep up the pressure. The way he's utilizing those zappies, the E-Wiz, just shutting down the push from Surge. That was absolutely massive. I mean, when Surge was forced to use his tombstone there in a position where he didn't want to, put him out of cycle, put him off his pace, and it came back to bite him. And here we are, the stats... A little faster cycle for Surgical Goblin, but a little slower on the elixir usage, and that might have been the difference. Of course, you just mentioned that tombstone being played when he didn't want it. And there we go. Faye, the Spaniard, just one win away from sealing this victory for G2 Esports. And a lot of people coming into this thought, you know, Team Liquid a favorite, one of those teams to watch, but G2 is saying, look, we're also currently undefeated. We want to keep that streak alive, but if there's anybody who is going to rally, to come back to take us to game number three. It's going to be Surgical Goblin. And we are off. Can Surgical Goblin win two games in a row and send this thing to King of the Hill? Or will Faye close it out in the next three to six minutes? Looking for that reverse sweep as Surgical Goblin dropping Zappies in the back. There's a lot of potential decks that can be involved with this bridge spam here. Dropping Zappies in the back is always such a great play because it opens up so many options. At some point, Faye's going to have to respond, and when he does, this allows Surge to pull out some great counterplay, or just, you know, drop a poison. Interesting play so far from Faye. Could potentially see a 3M and the Royal Hogs here. So, the question is, are we seeing that Royal Hog cannon car combination, or is this going to be that 3M deck we've seen here a couple times? It definitely could be either. I mean, knowing Faye, it's probably going to be leaning towards the 3M. We will see if that makes an appearance. As Hogs coming out now from both sides. Of course, Fireball is banned here, so we're not going to be seeing one of the strict counters to these Hogs. The other, of course, Valkyrie. Valkyrie getting across the bridge. The Zabbies, though, stopping her in her tracks. Lots of wows coming out already from Surge. I think he realizes he's maybe not the best position in terms of overall matchup right now. Not feeling super confident, but again, is anybody who's going to pull this out? It's going to be Surge. So there we go. The three Musketeers split in the back. Surgical Goblin putting the poison down to try to whittle away the two on the left-hand side but he is not feeling great at this moment. Not feeling super awesome right now, of course. Poison, you know, card we often see subbed in uh, around uh, with those fireballs as well, but look at the push coming in now on the right-hand side. The, oh, the Mega Knight is there, getting that initial drop damage, but still good chip coming in now for Fave. However, there is now going to be a response. The Mega Knight's going to push in. Well, Surgical Joblin knows that without the fireball, trying to stop the 3M 
Royal Hog combination. Very difficult. Even with Fireball, that makes you make a choice with its usage. And he right now is figuring out what can I do in double elixir time to try to pull this thing off. He's going to have to pick his poison here in this issue, no pun intended, between those Royal Hogs, between those three Musketeers. You have to make a choice. Which one would you rather deal with? And despite the fact that Surge, you know, throwing out some throwing out some manner to start this off, he's actually sitting in a very good position right now when it comes to the HP of these towers. And remember, the Mega Knight, a great counter for both Royal Hogs and Three Musketeers. So he could have more in his pocket than we believe. But now take a look, the right-hand side, it's Surgical Goblin pushing with a Royal Hog Flood. Yeah, but we are seeing a solid defense there. The counter is real with that Valkyrie, with the log as well. We saw a beautiful play from Faye right there with that Ice Golem, won the Mega Knight all the way across, hiding it around beautifully. The Hogs are going to be connecting now on both sides. Look at the towers, the Surgical Goblin still getting chunked away. And it's the Ice Golem distracting that Mega Knight, not letting him get involved on the offensive side of the board. So far, really only defensive work for the Mega Knight, and another split Hogs from Surgical Goblin trying to get on that right-hand tower, and he does. It's down under 500, under 300. It's going to go down. That is it. Surgical Goblin, after giving the GGs, takes it back. The win evens things up in this 1v1 set, and now he's just one minute away from sending this thing to King of the Hill. We now see Surgical Goblin calling good game. And it was a good game. It truly was going into this, making him look like, oh, I don't have the I don't have the answers here. But that Mega Knight having such a great job countering out those hogs. Yeah, you see Valkyrie. Yeah, you have Hunter. But that Mega Knight, every time it drops from this guy off the top rope, doing work. Well, here's the question. Could those crying emojis, could the uh, our emotes and the, and the GGs, could that have been some gamesmanship knowing he had the MK? Was he trying to bait Faye into getting over-aggressive and playing that wonderful counter card? Or are we just reading way too much into this. Anything is possible here in the Clash Royale. The uh, the, the emote meta? Mm, Low-key emote meta we're seeing coming out right now as both teams are discussing strategy, discussing how they want to do this. You know, we've seen how much these deck matchups matter in these situations, how you're able to mind game your opponent, think you're going to play something else, and then pulling out potentially the counter here, so... Well, it might be the other way around, too, is maybe that the moment he saw what the deck was, he saw that he had MK, and he was GG in the opposite direction, going, look, you don't know what I have, but I know what I have, and I feel really bad for you. Well, we're going to see if, uh, again, we can take this to our King of the Hill. We're going to take this to our tiebreaker. Surgical Goblin needs to bring one more to take this reverse sweep and bring us to our ace match. Let's see.